Hello shenanigamers, and welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. Last time we went into the ruins. Things went alright for us there. So where do we go now? The Martyr's Seal. Plus 60% damage and 14% crit at death's door, plus 12% death blow resist, plus 15% max HP. Wow. That's not bad. We have two opportunities to get that. Then there's Eternity's Collar, Heaven's Hairpin, the Ancestor's Portrait, plus 50% Resolve XP, plus 10% Stress. That's pretty good. Fortifying Garlic, Dazzling Mirror, another chance to get Heaven's Hairpin. Another chance to get the Martyr's Seal. Demon's Cauldron, Restraining Padlock, Lioness Warpaint, Lioness Warpaint for the Hellion, Crimson Court Trinket, plus 20% damage if hit points are below 75%, 50%, and 25%, plus 10% stress, Outcast, Alone, Shamed, plus 7 Accuracy, and Dodge. Hmm, interesting. So, the lower the Hellion's health is, the more damage they deal. Stacking, I imagine that would stack up to a maximum of 60%. That's very interesting. And then the Sly Eye Patch for the Man at Arms. Plus 4 dodge, minus 10% stun and move resist. And then, of course, the Darkest Dungeon. Where we can get Hell's Hairpin, which we don't need. We already have that. I think we're gonna go for the Cove this time. And since we are going for the Cove, we should bring Crimson Ficare. They do rather well in the cove. We could bring Shabam with them. Who else would be good in the cove? Veral is a cove scrounger. And Hound's Rush already does more damage to beasts. Hmm. Potentially. Who else? Ormond could be good. The Blights that they can deal would be helpful, and Pierce being able to bypass protection would be good. The Noi might be a good idea to bring with us. They have Eldritch Slayer and Eldritch Hater, so that could be good. I think someone else had skills in regards to the Eldritch. Who was that? It was Shabam. They had Eldritch Slayer. Well, they have Eldritch Slayer. Uh, do we bring Guerabout? I suppose we could. Hmm. We could also bring Fitzherbert, but I don't think that's our best bet. Hmm. 
could take Uri with us, but we want someone who's good at the back of this party. Which makes me believe we should bring Zombe. They are they are already an Eldritch hater. They're good for positioning. They're decent enough as a healer. And they've got all the debuffs we could need. And then we have Vinoy and Ormond for stuns and blights and to bypass stealth. And then we have Crimson Ficker for bleeds and overall damage. Yeah, I think Zombie is going to be in the back of the party this time. Let's make sure we get these guys some trinkets though. And unequip all, sort by rarity. Now, what do we give Zombie? We give them the evasion incense, lowering their speed but upping their dodge considerably. And then we give them the cursed incense to up their debuff and move skill chance at the cost of their max HP. To Vinoy, we give the padlock of transference for the extra stun and blight skill chance. And the Lock of Fury for the extra damage and speed at the cost of some max HP. Ormond gets the Shimmering Scale for the protection at the cost of a little extra stress. And the Dancer's Foot Wraps for the extra move resist and speed. And then Crimson Ficker. What do we give you? We could give you the Ancestor's Candle. Hmm. The fact that you have Warrior of Light means that the Ancestor's Candle can kind of stack on top of that to give you an extra 25% damage if the torch is above 75, and an extra 15% damage if it's above 50. Or, alternatively, we could just give you Dismas' Head. That would lower your max HP by the same amount that your tough quirk raises it. and then put your stress at net zero. So this is just a damage buff. This ups your damage, speed, and dodge the higher the torchlight is, though. So then I am tempted, very tempted, to put that on you. Hmm. Lowering debuff and bleed resist would be a bad idea. I think the bleed amulet might actually be a good idea here. Going into the cove, there's not really that many things in the cove that inflict blight. So lowering blight resist isn't really that big of a problem, I don't believe. Or at least I'd like to think it isn't. And even if it is, we have Zombe who can heal. Yeah, we'll be able to get through that. Let's go ahead and go to the guild. Make sure Grims and Figuer's skills are upgraded. We want to get that Barbaric Yop up. And the Wicked Hack, if it bleeds. Hmm. You know what? We could actually do with getting Adrenaline Rush in place of Breakthrough. Breakthrough is nice if we're 
at the were shoveled around and at the very back. But we have enough members in this party who can move about a bit more freely that I think it's a better idea if we just bring Adrenaline Rush to buff damage and accuracy, to heal, and to cure blights and bleeds. It's not much of a heal. It's more for the buff than anything. But it's still pretty good. Cool. We'll still max out Breakthrough, though. Zombie has all their skills maxed out. Ormond does not have all their skills maxed out. They could, though. God, that would still cost a lot. Hmm. Let's max out Pierce first and foremost. And then with Vinoy. We're gonna max out anything. Let's make it absolution and manacles. We'll keep a bit of funding on us. We'll upgrade beat we'll upgrade beast bile as well. Just in case. It's all the skills upgraded now. Are there any trinkets we have duplicates of? Yes, we have two solar crowns. We can sell one of those off. Sort by rarity. Okay. No more duplicates. Let's get back into here. Make sure we're on the right quest. And go on to provision. We'll get what we typically take in with us. Full stack of food. We'll take the full stack of... Well, no. We'll take three shovels. We'll take four... And we'll take five anti-venoms. We will take six bandages, though, because they like to bleed in the cove. We'll also take all six medicinal herbs in case we run into curios. That can get rid of a negative quirk. Two skeleton keys. Five holy waters. We'll actually take five laudanum. Two full stacks of torches. And then I believe we're good, so let's go ahead and embark. Cove. The fish folk's scaled skin affords them increased resistance to bleeding attacks. It most certainly does. These salt-soaked caverns are teeming with pelagic nightmares. They must be flushed out. All right. So, because of something Crimson Gare did in town, they have minus five dodge for the entirety of this quest, but that's fine. We can deal with that. Let's head up here, go down the dead end, if we can. I came from nothing, but I'll not end with nothing. Alright, zombie. Let me get a shovel and some gold, that's fine. There's a trap, Jormond oh, did not dodge. With a singular purpose. That was a brutal debuff we were going to go ahead and get rid of. Minus 30 dodge, minus 8 speed for 12 rounds. That is insane. Alright, no room battle, no scout. We're gonna head up this way then. Here we go. So we have the Bloated Thrall, 27 hit points, Eldritch and Unholy. 21 dodge, 2 speed, 90% stun resistance, 50% light and debuff resistance, and 60% bleed resistance, and 65% move resistance. And then we have the Squiffy Ghast. 
They're un they're an unholy enemy. Fifty three hit points. Thirty. No, uh, they're an unholy enemy with fifty three hit points. Thirty two dodge. Eight speed. One hundred ten stun resistance. One hundred forty percent bleed resistance. 55% blight and debuff resistance, and 45% move resistance. Well, let's go ahead and deal with what we can, because we also have the insatiable ghoul here. But we've dealt with the ghoul <laughs> a fair bit. But we also know that these thralls are dangerous. So, let's see if we can't get rid of the thrall first, I suppose. Let's go for the pierce on this thrall. Get some decent damage going there. And we'll go for the manacles on the ghoul. See if we can get the stun, which we do. And then we'll go with the vulnerability hex on the bloated thrall. A the crit for two. Lower their dodge and mark them. And then we'll have Crimson Fiker go for the wicked hack. Alright, the bloated thrall is down. Maddening Shanty. Good dodge, Zombie. And then there's the stun. And then the squiffy ghast is up front. Alright then. Let's go for the manacles on them then. A bit of damage, they resist the stun. Let's go for the expose. Good damage there. Lowering their speed. Off kilter jig. Zombie dodged it. That's stress and horror on the Noi, Ormond, and Crimson Piquet. Let's actually go for the vulnerability hex on the Squiffy Ghast. With another crit for two. Very nice. Very nice. A rend on Ormond. Ow! They resist the debuff and the bleed, though. Alright, let's go ahead and use this laudanum on Crimson Piquet. We're going to go for the... And we'll go for if it bleeds on the squiffy ghast. Decent damage there. We'll go for the laudanum here on the noi, and then go for the manacles on the squiffy ghast. And then we'll go for the laudanum here on Normand, and go for the captivate on the ghast. Nice amount of damage. And we get the Blight. A rend on Armand. Ow! We resist the debuff and the bleed again. We're gonna go for the weird reconstruction on Zombie. Or with Zombie on Ormond. Healing for 25. Very nice. And then we'll go for another If It Bleeds on the Ghast. That'll take them down. The enemy crumbles. That just leaves the ghoul. Let's go ahead and go for... Actually, let's go for some Absolution here. With Vinoy. Crit heal for 10. That'll get their stress completely reduced. To zero. Now we'll go for the Captivate on the Ghoul. They resist the Blight. It's alright, we'll go for the Weakening Curse. We get the debuff. Lowering their damage and protection. They go for the Howl. No one dodges it, and everyone gets horror. Let's go for the wicked hack then. And they dodge. Alright. Well, let's go for the manacles then. We get the stun. Alright. Uh, let's go for the pierce then. The crit for 22. Stun goes off. Go for another weakening curse. We get the debuff. The protection is gone, so then the wicked hack should do a lot more damage now. With a crit for 31. Does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Very nice. You can use this torch. Take the worry stone, the gold, and the ruby. And we'll keep going. Everyone gets a bit stressed out. Those are still a horror anyway. Let's make sure we switch back to the default party order. Check this crate. Has some heirlooms. Take the emerald. We'll actually swap out the worry stone for those portraits. 
check this sack. Some more coin. Bring the torchlight up. Head into this room. And we have a room battle. We have a bloated thrall, a pelagic champion, a pelagic piranha, and a pelagic tide master. Let's go for the pelagic champion with the pierce first from Ormond. Get some decent damage going there. Stress wave on Vinoy. A little bit of damage and some stress. Spear fishing on Zombe. Ow. Moves him up one. Let's go ahead and just move Vinoy up one in response to that then. And let's go for the Wicked Hack on the Bloated Thrall. Nice amount of damage there. We go for the Gargling Grab. Ow. A fair bit of damage to Crimson there. Barnacle Barrier on the Tidemaster. So they're now guarded, which is not great. But alright. Well then, let's go ahead and... Uh, hmm. Let's go for the Vulnerability Hex on the Bloated Thrall. The crit for two. But we get the debuff, so their dodge is lowered now, so it'll be easier to hit. Spearfishing on Vinoy, which they dodge. Let's go for Expose here on the Bloated Thrall. That'll get rid of them. Destroy them all. Stress Wave on Ormond and Zombe. Ow. I'm starting to get a little stressed out, but it's alright. Let's go for the Beast Bile here. Get the Blight and the debuff on both of them. Of course, the Pelagic Tidemaster was guarded by the Pelagic Champion, but they took the Blight and the debuff, so that's fine. Now, let's go ahead and go for the... Uh, let's go for the Vulnerability Hex on the Pelagic Piranha, which they dodged. Octocestus on Armand, good dodge. Go for the wicked hack on the piranha. There we go. Good amount of damage. The blight will take care of them. Let's go for another beast bile here. A decisive we get the crit on the champion and we get the blight and the debuff on both targets again. Call of the deep on the champion. Is not great. Let's go for the pierce. Crit for 22. Very nice. Mm, let's go for the weakening curse on them then. Does no damage, but lowers their damage and protection. Blight takes them down to one. Octocestus on the mond. Ow. They resist the bleed though. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Now, Crimson Fikir. Go for the wicked hack and take down the champion. Now the Tide Master is the only one left. Let's go for the manacles. See if we can get the stun. And we do. And then the stun goes off. All right, very nice. Let's go for the expose then. Move back into position. Then we're gonna go for a weird reconstruction on. Hmm. What should we do that for? Actually, we'll do that for Zombe. The crit heal for 18. And they resist the bleed, of course. We'll go for the wicked hack. The Tide Master, which they dodge. Alright. Hit them with the manacles again. Gets a bit more damage going there. We'll go for the pierce. Crit for 22. Take what we can from here. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Alright, there's no scout in that room, but we did finish the room battle. So let's head back. And then we can go down the path we have not yet gone down. This way. Check this crate. Of some busts in here. Waiting to be spent. Can't take any of them. We'll deal with the hunger. 
Bring the torch light back up. There's another trap. Which mind that such crimson care does not rule. avoid. We'll use some more medicinal herbs to get rid of that debuff. Bring the As torch light the back up. Purchase. Head into this room. Spirits are lifted. We have another room battle. The Maddening Shanty on Vinoy ups their stress until camp. That's a pretty strong debuff. Plus 15% stress until camp. That's strong. And then we also have the since we well we have the squiffy gas, the bloated thrall. Well, we have a squiffy gas, a bloated thrall. A pelagic champion and a paralyzing stinger. With 20 hit points, they're Eldritch. With 34 dodge, 9 speed, 90% stun and bleed resistance, and 50% blight, debuff, and move resistance. Well, let's go ahead and go for the manacles on the bloated floor. We get the stun. We go for the shocker. Lombe resists the debuff, but not the stun. Let's go for the Captivate on the Thrall, actually. Get some damage going there. And we get the Blight. The stun goes off on Zombie, and then we'll go for the Wicked Hack on the Thrall, which misses. The Blight does some damage. The stun goes away. Or it goes off, rather. The Barnacle Barrier on the Jiffy Ghast, or Squiffy Ghast. There we go. It's a Squiffy Ghast. Shocker on Ormond. They get the debuff. And the stun. Let's go for the beast's bile here. That hits both the thrall. Ooh. Went for the off kilter jig there. Uh, two of them dodged, and I think it just missed one of them. But it's stressed out, and well, it it got horror on Crimson Fiquer is the main thing there. Now then, let's go for the, uh, yeah, let's use another bit of laudanum here. And then we'll go for a wicked hack on this thrall. Actually, the blight will deal with the thrall. We don't need to worry about that. So let's go for if it bleeds on this paralyzing stinger, which they dodge. Well then... Instead, let's go for the Vulnerability Hex on the Stinger to lower that dodge, if we can. Get them marked and lower that dodge. The Thrall goes away. Octocestus on Crimson Gear. They get the bleed. It's fine, we have bandages. Shocker on Zombie. Ow. They get the debuff and the stun. Let's go for the Manacles. On the Pelagic Champion, we get the stun, which gets rid of the protection or the guard on the Squiffy Ghast. So then let's go for Captivate. We'll actually go for Captivate on the Stinger. And we get the Blight, so now the Stinger is done for. Maddening Shanty on Zombie, which misses. And they bring themselves up to the front, which makes them easier for the Crimson Fikir to hit. We'll use this bandage, make sure that the bleed is no longer on them. And then we'll go for the Wicked Hack. 16 damage. Not bad. The stun goes off on the Pelagic Champion. And then we're going to go for the Beast Bile again. Keeps the Blight going on the Champion. Off kilter jig, moves into the back, puts horror on everybody. Gnawing uncertainty. The birthplace of dread. Let's go for the pierce on the champion. The crit for 22. And then we'll go with... Hmm, we'll go with wicked hack. Yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, we'll go for the wicked hack on the ghast. Another good bit of damage there. And then we'll go for weird reconstruction on... Crimson, bring them up, they resist the bleed, which is good, Octocestus on Lamond, 
good dodge. The Blight will now take care of the champion, so you don't have to worry about that. Let's go for the Manacles on the Ghast. Okay, resist the stun. Let's go for the Expose on the Ghast. Okay, resist the debuff. Maddening Shanty on Zombie. Okay, resist the debuff. Champion is gone, so let's go for the Wicked Hack. For 20, that'll take him down. This expedition at least promises success. Use the laudanum here on Crimson. Just so that we make sure that they don't get too stressed out. Ormond's pretty up there in terms of stress, but not quite to the same point as Crimson yet. And then we're actually going to take this Sapphire. We already took some gold there. And let's head this way. And there's a hallway battle here. Two paralyzing stingers and an insatiable ghoul. Alright, let's do what we can, I suppose, then. Let's go for the beast bile. That'll hit one of the stingers and the ghoul. Get the blight and the debuff on both of them. Let's go for the captivate on the stinger. Deal more damage that way. Sets the Blight up to 9 there. Get the Shocker on Zombie. They resist the stun and the debuff. And then another Shocker on Zombie, which they dodge. And then the Skull Toss on Vinoy, which they dodge. Alright. Very nice. Very nice. So the Blight will take care of that Paralyzing Stinger. So let's go for this one in the front. Crit for 35. And then we can go for the Weakening Curse on the Insatiable Ghoul. Drop the protection and their damage. Go for another Captivate. Get some more damage there. Bring the Blight up. Go for another Beast Bile, which they dodge. The Blight takes care of the Stinger. Howl. Well, then there's a howl from the ghoul, which gets horror affecting Vinoy, Zombie, and Ormond. But uh, Crimson resisted, which is good. So let's go for the weakening curse on the ghoul. Impressive. Again. They now have no protection, so let's go for the wicked hack. The crit for 34. The greater the glory. Very nice. Go ahead and use that torch. Creatures can be felled. They Take can what we can be from here, which is nothing else. So let's just keep going then. Head in here. And there's a room battle. Uka Savage, a Pelagic Piranha, a Pelagic Tidemaster. And they do shuffle us around a bit. The noise at the front in Crimson Care is now at the back. Zombie in the third position and Ormond in the second. It's not too big of a problem though. We can move Vinoy back too. Go for the stress wave on Ormond, which is not good. Ormond's definitely gonna have a have a have a stress break potential here soon. We go for the spear fishing on Vinoy. Not great, but all right. We're just gonna move Crimson Fiker up one. We're gonna use Serpent Sway here with Ormond. Seeing as they're up in the front, we wanna make sure they don't take much damage if we can help it. And then let's, uh, uh, let's go for the Weakening Curse on the Uka Savage. Get the debuff. Arterial Pinch on Crimson Fiker. We resist the debuff and the bleed. That's a nasty bleed. Don't want to have to deal with that. Glad we resisted that one. Let's go for the manacles on the pelagic piranha. We get the stun. Call of the deep on, this, on the Uka Savage. More damage, accuracy, and crit. Not great. Ormond's resolve is tested, and they become focused. Awesome. 
rekindle your fire. Let's go for the pierce on this savage. Then we'll go for another weakening curse. Drop the protection and damage even further. Stun goes off. And we're going to go for the breakthrough here. The crit for 15 on the savage. Arterial pinch on Vinoy. Ow. And they get the bleed and the debuff. Bring rhythm back into your steps. Plus 10 accuracy, plus 10% crit for four rounds. Very nice. Very nice. I like that. Well then, let's go ahead and uh, let's go for the pierce on this piranha with a crit for 22. You fell out of step. That's one less to worry about. The noise to bleeding. That's the last of the horror though. We'll actually use the medicinal herbs here. That debuff with a minus 33% healing receive is not great. And then we'll use a bandage to get rid of that bleed. And we could use Absolution here, but instead we're going to go for the Manacles on the Tidemaster. And we get the stun. And there goes the stun. That's fine. We'll go for the Weird Reconstruction on Vinoy. That heals them for two. Not great, but it's better than nothing. And then uh, we'll go for the Wicked Hack on the Savage. Decent amount of damage. The arterial pinch on Vinoy again. They resist the debuff and the bleed. Go for the expose on the Tidemaster. You get the debuff there. Go for the Sea Breeze on the Uka Savage, healing them for 16, which is not great for us. Let's go for the Manacles on the Tidemaster. We get the stun again. Now, let's go for the Wicked Hack on the Savage with a crit for 22. And then, go for the Weird Reconstruction on the Noi again. Go for 7 that time. And then another Arterial Pinch on the Noi. Ow. Resist the debuff and the bleed again. Let's go for Absolution this time. A little bit less stress and a heal. Go for the Pierce on the Savage. Good amount of damage there. Go for the Weakening Curse on the Savage now. Bring the protection and the damage back down. There goes the stun on the Tidemaster. And then we'll go for If It Bleeds on the Tidemaster. That'll take them down. Tidal Slam on Armand. They block. They resist the move. They resist the stun. Now we can go for the Expose on the Uka Savage. We get the debuff. Let's go for the Wicked Hack. Good amount of damage there. Go for another Absolution here. Healing up Benoi a little bit more. And then we can go for the Weakening Curse again. Lowering the damage, lowering the protection. We go for the Arterial Pinch on Ormond. They block, they resist the debuff, they resist the bleed. Which means you can go for Absolution one more time with Annoy. And we'll go with the Pierce. Monsters That'll take them down. Has no intrinsic merit, unless inordinate exsanguination be considered a virtue. Set the party order back to its default. Take what we can from here. Close this. We do get a scout. Looks like there's another room battle with a curio ahead of us. Past two other curios. Let's use a key and find out what's in this chest first. A lot of crests. Well, let's use the uh, let's use two food here to heal up Ormond a little bit. Then we'll take one stack of crests. And then we'll move on. Check this crate. Four deeds. We're already pretty stocked right now. Deal with the hunger. 
It came from nothing, but I'll not end with nothing. Another chest. Here receives a nasty gash. Zombie resists the bleed, though. That's good. Bring the light back up. Head into this room. And there's the room battle. We have a bloated thrall, an armored maggot, a pelagic piranha, and a pelagic tidemaster. And all the tidemasters thus far have been stealth. This one is no exception to that. They are also stealth. Well, let's go ahead and try to do what we can here. Let's go for the manacles on the bloated thrall. We do not get the stun. Stress wave on Armand and Vinoy. Good dodge from both of them. Go for the Wicked Hack on the Thrall, which they dodge. So then we go for the Pierce on the Armored Maggot. Crit for 22, which takes them down. Seaward Slash on Crimson Figuer, which they dodge. And then let's go with the Vulnerability Hex on the Bloated Thrall. Get the mark and the debuff, lowering their dodge by 20. Gargling grab on Armand. Ow. Sea breeze on the bloated thrall. That's not great, but just killed them back up to full. Go for the manacles on the bloated thrall again. Resist the stun. Seaward slash on Crimson Figuer. Ow! Unsteady breath makes for unsteady movement. They buffed. Crimson's accuracy and crit again. Alright. We'll go for the pierce on the bloated thrall. Good amount of damage there. We'll go for the wicked hack. The thrall is down. We don't have to worry about the revenge from them. Now, let's go for the vulnerability hex on the pelagic tidemaster. Lowering their dodge a bit if we can. We get the debuff, so we do. Now, let's go with the manacles on them as well. See if we can get the stun. There we go. Seaward Slash on Hamond. Ow! That does a lot of damage. Let's go for the Weird Reconstruction on Hamond. Heal them for 10. They resist the bleed. Go for the Expose, actually. Actually, we're going to go for the Serpent Sway. Get the blocks up. And then we'll go with the Wicked Hack from Crimson Figuer on the Tidemaster. That'll take them down. Now we can go for the manacles and the piranha. We get the stun. Go for the expose. We get the debuff. Go for the wicked hack. Crit for 35. Take them down. Take what we can from this. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Oh, that's all the room battles there are. Let's see what's ahead. A trap and a curio. And then we have this fish idol to deal with. Let's just have Vinoy interact with it. They get a debuff. Minus 25% damage, minus 10 accuracy until camp. Not great. Let's go ahead and move on just to see what's in that final room. We have a 70, 80, 60, and 60 for a trap disarming. Let's have Ormond take a crack at it. There we go. Moving on, we have a pack here which contains loot. Glittering gold, trinkets and baubles, paid for in blood. Bring the torchlight up, go into this last room. There's no scout, so there's no secret room here. That's fine. Quest is complete. We're gonna go ahead and return to the hamlet. At last, wholesome marine life can flourish. If indeed there is such a thing. We wound up with quite a bit from that, actually. Over 10,000 with the combined treasure we collected and the caught and the, uh, the gold we got from the items we didn't use, and the quest reward. We also got a stack of crests, two portraits, and then three busts, the quest reward, and the Heaven's Hairpin, or a Heaven's Hairpin. We got this Heaven's Hairpin trinket for the Hellion now, which lowers stress and raises accuracy if the torch is above 75, which could potentially be good. 
And now, Zombe, Vinoy, and Ormond are all at level 6. They are all legends. Crimson Piquer is almost there. Not quite. I got hysterical blindness from that. Minus 20 accuracy if stress is above 70. We're going to go ahead and take care of that. Ormond got Cityomania, obsessed with food, replace deviant tastes, and weapon tinker. Minus 20% weapon upgrade cost, replaced natural swing, and vampiric spirits. Minus 50% debuff resist. We're going to get rid of that one too. And Zombe got resilient in place of eldritch hater. Plus 10% stress heal received. It's still not bad, but I think I would have rather the Eldritch Hater, but that's still alright. Let's go ahead and return. A fresh irritant to some. A sanguine memory to me. Let's go ahead and put Crimson Figuer in the hospital to get rid of their hysterical blindness, or in the medical ward rather. And Ormond can go there too to get rid of the vampiric spirits, or their vampiric spirits, whatever it is. Let's check the Nomad Wagon. We have Bloodthirst Ring, Blight Charm, Stun Stone, Critical Stone, nothing that interests us at the moment. Then in Stagecoach we have Veteran Hellion, or well, a Veteran Hellion, an Adventurer Jester, and Vestal, an Apprentice Vestal, and a Seeker Abomination, Antiquarian, and Bounty Hunter. None of those really interest us at the moment. So, we're going to go ahead and unequip all trinkets, sort by rarity. There we go. And that is going to go ahead and do it for this episode of Darkest Dungeon. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already if you want to see more content like this, or the other kinds of content that we put out on this channel. We're going to keep that content coming, so don't you worry about that. Hit the notification bell so that you receive notifications whenever we upload new videos. Leave a comment on the video. It helps us out a lot. It really, really does. Also, remember to leave a comment if you want to have one of the heroes in this roster named after you. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!